this example, we're going to do the same chocolate milk problem that we did before with Excel, but this time we're going to use math and formulas um, to be able to find the exact point where we maximize profit um, with this firm, um, which will require a little bit of algebra and a little bit of calculus, but it should be doable. Um, so you'll be able to see how we can find all of the different formulas for revenue and for costs and for marginal revenue and marginal costs, and you'll see the math behind uh, putting them together. Um, and we've, we'll be able to use Desmos to um, figure out where everything crosses. So we don't have to do the actual math for it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you remember from the previous video, we have um, a whole bunch of different costs here. We were able to find the fixed costs and the variable costs and average costs and marginal costs and all of that stuff. Um, but what is important here um, is the total costs. What we're most interested in, because we're trying to maximize revenue, is we want to know where marginal cost and marginal revenue cross. Um, so that means we need to find the equation for total cost and the equation for total revenue, and then we can use calculus to find marginal revenue and marginal cost. Um, so let's go ahead and keep track of all of the different equations we need to calculate here. So before we go back to Excel to look at the numbers, um, our main goal here is we want to maximize profit. We use the pi symbol there for profit. So to maximize profit, we want to find where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And wherever those two things are the same is going to be the best quantity of stuff to create to maximize profit. So in order to do this, we need to calculate a couple different things. We need to calculate total cost. And then, we, so we need to find a formula for total cost. We need to find a formula for marginal cost. We need to find a formula for total revenue. And we need to find a formula for marginal revenue. And then once we figure all these formulas out, we can set this one equal to that one, and then we should be able to find the ideal quantity. So we need to find each of these four equations. So if we go back to Excel, um, we actually have total costs and we can plot it. Um, so here's total costs, here's what the graph looks like. The issue with this though, is that it's not a straight line. Um, there's no easy way to just use like y equals mx plus b to find the y-intercept and slope. This is not a single slope, it curves upward. So that's really tricky um, to figure out an exact formula for that. But fortunately, um, Wolfram Alpha exists, and you can actually type these numbers directly into Wolfram Alpha, and it will figure out the best equation for you, um, the most accurate equation. So the way you do that is if you go to Wolfram Alpha and search for quadratic fit, um, it will let you type in a whole bunch of x and y values. You have to follow um, their syntax here. So you have to use um, curly braces, um, curly braces around the whole set of values, and then curly braces around each point. Um, but if you type all of these things in um, from Excel, um, which I did beforehand, so you don't have to watch me do all the typing here. If I click on Compute now, it will figure out, let's close these cookies here, um, it will figure out the best fit line here. And so it says that it's 1.3x squared plus 1.3x plus 20. So according to Wolfram Alpha, that is the line that best fits our total cost curve here. Um, we can verify that if we go to Desmos and put that formula in. Let's go to the graphing calculator. So it was y equals 1.3x squared. So y equals 1.3x squared plus, I think it was 1.3x. 1.3x plus 20, plus 20. So if we look at our graph now, um, we can't see it because it's zoomed out a little bit, but if we zoom like this, that is our total cost curve. And it should be the same as what we see in Excel here. It's not gonna be totally accurate um, because the axis here is more spread out and the Y axis is really squished down. Um, so if we adjusted the axes in Desmos, we'd be able to get the line that looks about the same. Um, but it is kind of the best fit there. That is our total cost. So if we plug in any value of any quantity, it should tell us the, the value for the, or how much, cost, how much it costs. So that is our formula. So if we go back to um, our paper here, we have a total cost function. So for total cost, the formula we have is P equals 
1.3q squared plus 1.3q plus 20. We've got total cost. Um, but we need the marginal version of that. We don't need the actual total cost. If we want to figure out how to maximize profit, we need marginal cost. So to figure that out, we take the first derivative of um, our total cost, which is the slope. And so to figure out the first derivative, um, we just do um, the, um, the derivative rule that we talked about a couple sessions ago, where we bring the exponent down. So this 2 comes down. So we say p equals 2 times 1.3 q to the 1, which is just q. This 1 here comes down. So it's 1.3 and then q to the 0, so q goes away, and then this doesn't have any q, and so that just disappears. And so our final equation here is p equals, it should be 2.6q plus 1.3. So that right there is our marginal cost line. Um, so that is how much it costs to make one additional gallon of chocolate milk. Um, and you can plug in any value of quantity for chocolate milk and it should show you the price for, or the cost for creating that. So we have one of our equations done. That's great. Um, so the next equation we need is marginal revenue. And in order to find that, we need to calculate total revenue. So we need to figure out a formula for that. And revenue is based on demand, um, not on any of the costs. And so if we look back at Excel here, um, we had the demand sheet right here that shows the different quantity and prices that you can create or that exist given the demand. And so we plotted this in the Excel example. So we'll go ahead and do that here too. We'll go to insert. We want to insert a scatter plot, but it's not actually a scatter plot. It's just the line here. There's our demand curve. So we can figure out a formula for this, um, kind of like we did with budget lines. Um, using y equals mx plus b because this is just a straight line. There's no weird um, changing slopes or anything. If you really wanted, you could go to Wolfram Alpha and type in all of these numbers and then it would figure out the line for you. But that's a lot of typing. So instead, we can not do that. And we can just look and see where the y-intercept is and then we can figure out the slope and then we'll be able to find the equation for the line. So we can do that over here. So let's go ahead and just do this on the bottom of this page here. This doesn't have to be super accurate on the graph here because we're just trying to figure out the numbers. So based on the graph in Excel, it said that it starts at zero here at 55, and then it ends down at zero at 11. Um, that's just based on the, the graph that we have in Excel. That's, those are just the points that we have um, here in this, in this plot. So, if we're looking for y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the intercept, we have the intercept, it is 55. And then the line goes here. So we have y equals something x plus 55. So to figure out the slope, that's the change in um, price over the change in quantity, or it's rise over run. So it's how much you go up or down over how much you go over. So that means we are going down 55 and over 11. Because we're going from 55 down to zero, and then we're going from zero to 11. So that can simplify down to just negative five over one, um, which is just a negative five. So our actual equation for demand is this right here, y equals negative five x plus 55. We can confirm that if we come to Desmos, um, just to make sure that we're actually plotting it correctly. Um, so we'll just make a new graph here. Um, graphing calculator. So our formula here was y equals negative 5x plus 55. And if we zoom out, that should be our demand curve, um, which is the same thing that we had in Excel. So it starts up at 55 and it goes all the way down to zero. Um, at 11 there. So there's our formula for demand, um, which is good, but that's not what we need quite yet. Um, because what we need to figure out is revenue. Um, we have demand, but we don't have revenue here. So let's go ahead and erase some of this. We have a little bit more space. So the formula for revenue, if we remember from Excel, 
the revenue formula is, so total revenue equals um, price times quantity. So what we have to do is um, we just calculate the price and we multiply price by quantity. If you remember in Excel, we did that just by multiplying these two columns together, um, quantity and price. We were able to make a total revenue column and that was just 0 times 55, 1 times 50, 2 times 45, etc. So the actual formula for that is just price times quantity. Um, so we can do a little bit of algebra to make it so that we can get an actual formula for total revenue. So let's switch back here. So the algebra we can do here, um, we need to multiply price and quantity together. That's too many different variables. That would be great if we could just work with um, quantity. Um, so if you remember, our demand curve here was this y equals negative 5x um, plus 55. Um, y and x in economics are really p equals negative 5q plus 55. That's the same thing, it's just that they use p instead of y and q instead of x. So using some algebraic trickery here, we know what p is. p is this whole formula there. So if we take this formula and plug it into p here, we end up with total revenue equals negative 5q plus 55 times q. And so that was kind of a, a weird algebra trick to get rid of the p. And all we're left with is the whole formula just using q's. So if we multiply that out, um, we end up with negative 5q squared plus 55q. And that is our formula for total revenue. We figured it out. So we can put that up here so we can keep track of everything. So it's going to be p equals negative 5q squared plus 55q. Now that we have total revenue, we can figure out marginal revenue, which is just the slope of total revenue, or the first derivative of total revenue. So to figure that out, um, we can figure out the derivative by bringing this um, exponent down. So it's going to be 2 times 5. So it's going to be negative 10q to the first power, or just negative 10q. And then this q right here is q to the first power. We bring that down. So it's going to be 1 times 55, which is 55. So plus 55 and the Q disappears. And so that is our marginal revenue. So we can say P equals negative 10 Q plus 55. And that is our official marginal revenue. All right, which means we just have one step left if we want to maximize our uh, profit. Because remember, the main formula we care about is um, this right here. We want to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. So the math way of doing that is we take our marginal revenue, revenue formula, which is negative 10q plus 55, and we set that equal to our marginal cost, which was 2.6q plus 1.3. Then you can use algebra to figure out what q is. Um, that would involve moving, like subtracting things, so adding 10q plus 10q minus 1.3 minus 1.3. So you're left with like, 56.3 or something like that equals 12.6 Q. That's miserable though. We don't want to necessarily do all of that math, um, but that's how you do it algebraically. Instead, we can just do it with a graph um, because that makes life far easier. And so if we come to Desmos, um, let's get rid of that demand curve. So we want to figure out where marginal cost and marginal revenue um, cross. So our formula for marginal cost was um, y equals 2.6x uh, plus 1.3. So there's our, our line for marginal cost. And we want to see where it crosses um, marginal revenue, which is y equals negative 10x plus 55. And they end up crossing right here somewhere. If we hover over that point, it will tell us exactly where they cross, which is 4.26. Um, and that is the ideal place to, um, that's the ideal quantity to um, um, maximize profit. If you want to get the most possible profit, that's where you should produce. You should be making um, 12 point, or 4.2 gallons of chocolate milk, and that will bring you the most possible profit, um, which is what we found with Excel. If you remember, 
Um, with Excel, it was somewhere between four and five. We couldn't figure out exactly where it was because we weren't finding exact slopes or the exact marginal costs or the marginal revenue. Um, but here, because we're using actual um, algebra and calculus instead of kind of the more chunky row-based numbers that we had in Excel, we can find the exact number, which is still between four and five, but it's 4.2 here. Um, we can verify this because we want to see where profit is the biggest. So if you remember, there's a specific formula for profit. It is, um, if we switch back to here, so profit, let's go ahead and just write this down. So profit is equal to our total revenue minus total costs. Um, it's all the money you're bringing in minus all of the money you have to spend. So that's our formula for profit here. If we want to plot this, we can actually just use, we have this formula, we have total revenue, um, that's this right here, and we have total cost, that's this right here. If we just plot um, total revenue minus total cost, we will see a curve um, that gets higher and higher and higher, and then it starts leveling out, and then it gets lower and lower and lower, and that shows how much profit we're getting as we increase our quantity. So we can go ahead and do that in Desmos um, because it's easy to do. So we will come to Desmos, we'll just make another graph. And we will just let Desmos do lots of the work here for us. So we're going to say y equals. So we want total revenue minus total cost. So we're going to put the formulas that we found inside these parentheses. So total revenue was negative 5x squared plus 55x. Um, that is our total revenue formula. And then total costs was one3 x squared plus 1.3 x plus 20. So that was our formula for total costs. So we didn't, like, if we really wanted to, we could um, consolidate this and figure out what negative 5 minus 1.3 is. It's negative 6.3. We could, like, simplify this down into just a regular formula. But for Desmos, we don't need to. We can just leave it like this, and it will plot it um, as we need it. So if we zoom out, we can see that this is going up um, until it hits some point in the middle and then it goes down. And if we hover over this thing, the very maximum of this parabola is um, where an x is 4.2, which is what we found before. That's the maximum profit right here is when we do 4.262. That's where we're going to maximize profit. We can actually see that in the parabola. So that is the quantity we should make. And the total profit we're going to bring in is, um, where did it go? $94 um, in profit. If we make a little bit less than uh, 4.2, like if we make 3.4 right there, we're only going to bring in $90 of profit. If we start making more and we make like 5.5 gallons, we're going to bring in $84 of profit. Um, so this is right here at the top, the maximum profit. So we were able to calculate that without using Excel, without using um, like the formulas within each row, we were able to figure out using, um, using calculus and using some algebra, um, which is pretty exciting.